I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is my life living in Leon, Nicaragua. The storm season is upon us and I've got one rolling in. It's the middle of the afternoon and it's super dark out here. There is absolutely no contrast in anything that we're doing. Today I've got a question from Scott 80 CA. I bet he was born in 1980 somewhere in Canada. It was just a guess. And uh, he has some questions about an upcoming hope of retiring possibly to someplace like Nicaragua, but he wants to know what it's like with the natural disasters around here and about the whole walking ATM problem that foreigners are generally familiar familiar with in a lot of countries. So we're going to dig into that right after that bump. All right, everybody, let's get right to Scott's questions. Let's jump right in. We're going to answer these. I'm going to bring it up and actually read the question for you. I've done my best to have it here on my phone. Scott 80 CA says, I'm Canadian living in Vancouver, British Columbia. I'm working two jobs, but it's mainly so I can save to retire early. Great idea. I love that approach. I've spent some time in the Philippines, even stayed there for six months. However, not so crazy about the Philippines. To be honest, there's two things that have soured me on the Philippines. Number one is the natural disasters, including typhoons, one which destroyed the house. That would sour me as well, Scott. Wow, that's a, that's a major one. All right. Second is the fact that it seems like locals in the Philippines look at a foreigner, especially a Westerner, as a walking ATM. And I just don't like that kind of feeling. I don't like being stared at. I don't, being like, I don't like being looked at. I'm something special. Looked at as like I'm something special, if that makes sense. I'm an introvert. I do not like to be the center of attention at all. The questions I have are, one, what's the natural disaster situation like in Nicaragua? Are they prevalent? Are there earthquakes? Are there volcanoes and, and hurricanes? I mean, the quick answer there is yes. And two, how do locals view expats and foreigners there? Are they looking at them as normal people just trying to retire and live their life? Or are they looking at them as something like a walking ATM or something? Do they have a colonial mentality there? Thanks. Okay, so let's start with number one. Are there natural disasters? What is the overall natural disaster situation in Nicaragua? It's a wow, there's a lot of natural disasters in Nicaragua kind of thing. So let's start with earthquakes because that's the first one on the list. Do we get earthquakes here? Yes, we get a lot of earthquakes, more or less continuous. I do on my shorts try to post those. So I'm assuming, Scott, that you're new to the channel, as are specifically a large number of Canadians who found the channel because of the whole Canadians moving to Nicaragua discussion. So we have a lot of channel newbie uh, Canadians who are here, plus people from all over, we're always getting new people, but very specifically, we have quite a few, hundreds in fact, of Canadians who've just joined in the last several days. And so a lot of this you may not be aware because we've actually been in a low earthquake like two week period. So in general, we have earthquakes every few days. I mean, we have something every day, but it's like, a, you know, 0.1 or something of earthquakes that are large enough to register. Here we tend to care about like a 4.0 and larger, smaller than that, like, no one would even mention it. Even at 4.0, it seems pretty silly when our big ones are in the sevens. So until it hits like a six something, we really don't care, but we do sometimes mention it in the fours and fives because at least it's kind of interesting. But it is important to understand, 1972, the city of Managua was liquefied, right? That is full liquefaction of the city. It's one of the largest earthquake disasters in recent times. The city was destroyed. However, because of the 1972 disaster, the country is well prepared for earthquakes. We get them all the time. We get ones that are bigger than that, and they actually cause basically no damage. The biggest earthquakes we can get here do essentially nothing. I've been through a seven plus and yeah, everyone phones around to make sure everyone's okay, but that's it. No buildings significantly damaged. Everyone has cracks here and there, paint falls off, Something sometimes things will rattle off shelves, that kind of stuff. But honestly, because we live in a place with continuous earthquakes and one historic disaster, we've really prepared the country. So Everything in Nicaragua is designed around the earthquake situation. So buildings are low, buildings are concrete, things are safe. So in reality, you're probably safer from earthquakes here where we get them all the time than you are in places that don't expect them. Like I grew up in Western New York and we took significant damage from a 4.3 in 1991, I believe it was. Um, and no one got killed, luckily, but lots of damage, houses damage, bridge damage, you know, completely changed the flow of rivers, all kinds of things. That was really significant from a 4.3, but here we take a seven plus and no one bats an eye. So it's all perspective. You really actually, if you're looking at natural disasters, I think in general, if you're looking at the natural disasters from a uh, an absolute perspective, you say, okay, does Nicaragua have and list the natural disasters? You go, E, it has everything. But then if you look at it from a, how much do these things actually risk 
your life and limb, you go, oh, it's a really safe country from a natural disaster perspective, especially if you put in a little bit of planning yourself, right? You can put yourself in harm's way, so don't do that. But with a little bit of common sense or a little bit of worry, if that's something you're worried about, you can make these things really good. So earthquakes, honestly, we go through them all the time. Do not worry at all. The one thing that is a worry with earthquakes, and this is real, and unlike normal earthquake fears, right? Oh, the building's going to come down, which we don't worry about at all. This is not Mexico City, right? We don't have high rises that are wobbling. There's nothing like that. That's why we don't have high rises and anything over two stories. If it's new, it's going to have a big thing built for earthquakes. Like they advertise that like crazy because everybody is aware of it all the time. You, if you're out on the beach, major earthquakes can, and it's been most of a century uh, or nearly half a century, um, but they can trigger tsunamis. And so living directly on the water, you have to be ready to listen for tsunami, war tsunami warnings, know what to do, feel for the earthquake, all those things. So I do live part of the time on the beach, and that is a thing we have to be aware of. Tsunamis are a risk, and there is nothing that humans can do that is going to protect you from a tsunami, except for just warning you and being like, get away, right? So if you feel an earthquake on the beach, you look to the ocean. Right, you gotta know what's going on with your water. But anywhere else in the country, you don't care. You could be in Managua where it was liquefied in the, in the past. You have what, a huge earthquake, everything shaking. You go, that's interesting. If you're out here in Leon, never has it been affected by earthquakes. Go to Granada, never really affected by earthquakes. Nobody cares, right? Most people, like we've been around, we're like everything shaking and all the locals are like, is this a thing? Like, seriously, not a fear. So that's really important. And, and, you know, in the United States or Canada, typically you don't get that many earthquakes. California is an exception. And everything's built really tall. Things are built out of wood. There's a lot of, this isn't great for an earthquake, but they get so few of them that they don't need to be. Here it's the opposite. Everybody's prepared, not a worry. Next, volcanoes. We have so many volcanoes. Like, it's crazy, but we have like at least one that erupts every day. We have some that go off every few months, some that go off every few years, and from time to time, an, uh, a major volcanic event is going to cause some news in the country. So just uh, maybe a month ago, we had a major eruption on the island of Ometepe. There's a very active volcano out there, Concepcion, and it erupted and dropped all kind of ash on Moyagalpa and several other communities there on Ometepe. That was a cause for concern. Everybody was fine, not, not a big deal, but we were certainly worried about them, right? They could easily be cut off. They're on an isolated island, right? <laughs> like they can't just jump in the water and swim. I mean, they could, but they wouldn't make it anywhere, right? It would be a disaster. So, and they had to get ferries out there, but the ferries couldn't get there because the ash is coming down. I think it's a major problem. No, everyone was fine. And uh, they did, you know, look into it and everybody's worried, but they could be cut off from electricity. They could be cut off from, from internet. There's things that could go wrong out on the island. So there are certain communities that are built on the, on the sides of active volcanoes. Avoid those, right? All of those places like Ometepe, they know when they go there that they're taking a volcano risk. And they also know that it's not a very big risk. The risk that you're gonna have ash fall on you, high. The risk that you're going to be, you know, harmed by the volcano, low. So it's all about perspective. Here in Leon, for example, we can see, depending on where you are in the city, roughly 12 volcanoes visible from the city. So we are in volcano land. But it's important to understand that a volcano erupting at full force, if you have a stratovolcano that just blows its top, is still not going to wipe out cities that can see it from a distance. It wipes out things that are within its lava flow zone or within its, its direct ash and rock fall zone. So if you look at a place like Granada, which has a dormant volcano, right, it has, uh, it has rocks beyond the city. If that volcano was to explode, it could, in theory, drop actual rocks onto the city of Granada. It has not done that in millennium. We don't know if it's done it for over 10,000 years. It is a dormant volcano or an extinct volcano. It is not something you have to worry about, but it in theory could, right? So that one is one you have to worry about because I think it's only dormant, but, but no one's worried about it, right? That is not a realistic risk. All of human history has happened since the last time it has erupted. The chances that it'll erupt while you were there are so low that it's not a risk compared to like, you know, just getting hit by hail and having it kill you, right? That's a thousand times more likely uh, to be an actual risk. So you just have to gauge these things. But if you're here in like Chinandega, the city just to the north, they have a major uh, a volcano that erupts on a regular basis, San Cristobal, Cristobal, and that one 
when it really goes, drops all kinds of ash onto the city of Chinandega. Is Chinandega seriously worried about the volcano? No, it is a major, super important transit hub for the country, and they're willing to keep it where it is because, yes, the volcano can disrupt it, but they are in no fear of it being destroyed by it. Like, that's not a real fear. So that's important. If you get to the mountain cities, Esteli, Matagalpa, Hinotega, none of those are within a volcano zone. Hinotepe, Didiamba, none of those within a volcano zone. So you can easily find uh, areas that are not within even the remotest reach of a volcano. Or it could be like here in Leon, where if all 12 of our volcanoes went off at the same time, we'd still be like, that's just inconvenient because the roads far away from us are all blocked by all the ash. We would get dusty, but we're not in like danger or anything. So it just depends how far you are. But Leon Viejo, where the city used to be located, the name means old Leon, was actually within the lava flow and ash fall zone of a volcano. And they moved everybody because they said, wait, this is a foolish idea. Why did we build so close to the volcano? And everyone scratched their heads and said, honestly, we don't know what you were thinking. So they all packed up, they moved away, and then the volcano erupted and buried it like Pompeii, but unlike Pompeii, without any people in it. So now it's a cool archaeological site to go see, which it's like a 45 minute drive from here. It's not close, but that's how far away we are from the volcano, a 45 minute drive away, right? That is not within the danger zone. So all the major population centers of Nicaragua are reasonably far from volcanoes to a point where, yes, if you have real specific fears of a volcano, you may want to gauge which one you choose a little bit, right? You just never want to have to experience ash. You never want to even see one, you know, erupting. Yeah, you can move far away. But when we're here, when we find out a volcano is erupting, the first thing we all do is run out to watch it and take photographs because that's what's really cool. Nobody worries about it. Just like the earthquakes, this isn't something that we're afraid of in any way whatsoever. And it's funny because you live here and you start to hear people say, but what about volcanoes? And you go, oh yeah, we forget that people from like North America are afraid of volcanoes because it's not something to be afraid of. This isn't Italy, right? Where there's huge cities built on the slopes of volcanoes. They actually still do that in Italy. They have tiny islands where everyone's trapped next to a volcano. Most of the major volcanoes in Italy have hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people within the lava flow zone. There are more people living within life-threatening distance of volcanoes in Italy than there are people in Nicaragua. Like that's, that's kind of crazy. Cities like Naples are just really, really dangerous from that perspective. And those are live volcanoes. They haven't gone off in a long time, but they certainly could. And in many cases, they expect them to. And like my wife has flown into Sicily when the volcano was, minute Etna was just erupting or just starting to and just barely made it out and it in interrupts her flights like it's crazy. Now, Managua is a lot closer to active volcanoes than most of the other cities. So places like Granada, Leon, Matagalpa, you really have zero volcano fears. If you're in Managua, you have very small uh, volcano fears, but they do exist. So you, you may want to plan around it a little bit, but it is absolutely, it should not under any circumstances cause you to be like, is this a place I have to worry about natural disasters? Because you just don't, right? Like the lack of real life-threatening natural disasters is a huge draw here. It's part of the safety of life, but it's not because the country has no dangerous spots. It's because we don't live in foolish places within the country. You can say the same thing about the United States, right? Are there volcanoes? Yes. Do people live by them? No, that's the secret. Oh, okay. Right. If you countered up all the dangerous things in the United States, there's a lot of dangerous things, but like Nicaragua, people are smart enough to avoid them. And so when you're actually just spending your life here, right? We're not little islands like the Philippines. They're isolated and a lot of things can get really dangerous. Here, it's very different. So let's talk about the hurricanes. So can we get hurricanes in Nicaragua? On a technical sense, yes, we get hurricanes all the time. We're in the middle of the hurricane zone. Oh no, does that cause problems? No, not at all. Like we have never once heard of anyone being significantly affected by the hurricanes. When the hurricanes hit here, we run out to take videos because it's fun, right? Yes, the streets get annoyingly full of water and it's difficult to make it to dinner. That's the kind of things we have. One year we lost power for 30 minutes. Ooh, that was awful. We did uproot a tree. That was dramatic. But that's about it. The hurricanes caused no major disaster because, and this is very important, right? If you ask empirically, does Nicaragua get a lot of hurricanes? Well, yes. How many does the United States get? Way more. Now I didn't realize Canada gets like zero, but the United States gets hurricanes all the time. But if you live in Iowa, 
You don't care how many hurricanes hit Florida, the amount that it affects you is zero, right? Other than watching it on the news, it has nothing to do with you. Well, Nicaragua is much the same. Hurricanes come from the Caribbean, which is far away from the majority of Nicaragua. When people talk about, I live in Nicaragua, they mean traditional Nicaragua, which is the Pacific zone, which is where all the cities are, where the population is, and what was called Nicaragua in antiquity modern state of Nicaragua includes the Mosquito Coast and Corn Islands. So those areas, which are very prone to getting volcanoes, or <laughs> that makes no sense at all, are very prone to getting hurricanes, get hurricanes still all the time. And if you're out in like blue fields or something, really, really remote, hours and hours and hours away from here, and you have a landfall hurricane, yes, that would be very dangerous. Don't live there, right, if that's what you're concerned about. I mean, by all means, if you like Bluefields, feel free to live there. It's in probably a very nice town, but completely different than what we have out here. But when we're talking about living in Nicaragua, almost all the people and even more of the expats live in Pacific Nicaragua. And that means that a hurricane that is going to land has to come all the way across one of the largest jungles in the world and then hit a mountain range. So first of all, jungles pretty much put a big damper on, on hurricanes, but mountain ranges just end them. Then they have to come up over the mountain range and come through a long valley to get to most of Nicaragua. And by the time they get to any place of their cities and population, what you're looking at is just a really rainy day. They can be super rainy, and a few of the mountain towns like Matagalpa can end up with some severe flooding or even occasionally a mudslide or something like that. So be aware that mountain towns, that's always a case in mountain towns anywhere in the world, a lot of rain could cause some mudslides. So just something to be aware of. Matagalpa is the only town that really gets those with any frequency. And we just went through one of the heaviest rain weeks in recorded history here in, uh, in Nicaragua. And yes, one small part of the Matagalpa Hinotega road washed out. But not with people on it, not like a big disaster, just part of the road washed out during a major storm, and that's unfortunate they have to go repair the road. That's the kind of disaster we had during epic amounts of rain. So hurricanes also essentially a non-issue unless you really are just averse to rain. So with the exception of tsunamis, which only affect you if you live on the very nearest streets to the beach, you have essentially no natural disasters that you have to worry about in normal Nicaragua. In all the stuff that we show here on the show, you have nothing to worry about. Out here where I live, in Leon, in the west, other than it just being really warm a lot of the time, once in a while getting some flooding on the lower streets, we have no worries from any natural events whatsoever. It's an extremely safe area. We do not worry about the earthquakes, ever. The city's been here for 500 years. No earthquake has ever affected it to a degree where it was a problem. Just some cracks in the walls, which is normal. We have no worries about uh, volcanoes. That's not something that will ever affect the city. And we do not ever worry about hurricanes. We do know when they're coming so that we can, you know, get our umbrellas done, get home before the roads get, get messy. But that's about it. This is a great area, not just Leon, but large swaths of Nicaragua are absolutely perfect for someone who's worried about natural disasters. But it's funny because we get so many natural disasters. They're just more like natural events here. Just the natural situation in Nicaragua protects us to a point where they're not really disasters. All right, and on to your second question. So the walking ATM problem slash really obvious expat problem. There's a couple ways to approach this. So the first piece is, depending on where you live in the country, obviously this can kind of happen. If you're in a tourist zone, specifically Granada or San Juan del Sur, which are just full of tourists all the time, there is a tendency towards at least some people to start to have that walking ATM effect. However, most people won't be staring at you, right? You're not gonna have that you're standing out kind of thing because there are so many tourists that you just fit in. But the problem with heavy tourist zones such as those is that there is a strong tendency to be seen as the walking ATM. Not by all people by any stretch whatsoever, but by some amount of people for sure. There is a lot of people who realize that the number of foreigners who are passing through the country is such a high number and that they will pass through and they will be gone and another crop of them will come in the future, especially in those two particular spots, that they might as well beg from them because they never become a part of society. They're never going to be their neighbors. They're never going to be friends and family. They're never going to be a part of anything. They're never going to see them again, or at least not after a few months. So why not try to get a few dollars while you can, because this isn't a person you're ever going to connect with. So if that's something you don't like, then you definitely want to avoid those zones. Not that you need to avoid them, but just for living in. If you want to go vacation on the weekend over there, no problem. Same as being a tourist anywhere. If you're a tourist in Paris, you're going to get a little bit of the same effect in Barcelona, in Madrid, wherever, right? You go to a place that has a lot of tourists, that's going to happen by at least some people. It might be a little bit 
worse here because of the income disparity or perceived income disparity or super obvious look of what expats will look like when they're here. But it's basically the same as you're going to get a lot of places. But if you move to some place, for example, like here in Leon, will there ever be someone who suddenly asks you for money and they weren't asking other people for money? Yes, it can happen. Does it happen to me often? No, every maybe three to four months, it'll happen once. So very infrequent, but I'm not going to say it doesn't happen. I've certainly had some situations where some guy was just crossing the road in the middle of a barrio, middle of nowhere. He was just going from his house to a pulperia to buy a candy bar or something. I walked down the street and he immediately turned into a beggar because I was coming by, acted like that was his income, was begging on the street. And as soon as I walked on, he went right back to normal life, right? In no way was he homeless, in no way was he begging, and no a beggar, in no way was he needing anything. He just saw a white guy walking down the street and turned into a beggar instantly on the spot. But that was two years ago, and it stands out in my memory as an event that happened, right? That was that guy was a jerk. It's not that it's a normal thing. I remember a second incident that one time I was at a restaurant, restaurants here outside, and some guy saw me and just kept yelling at me from the street. Now I find mostly if that happens, someone will walk out and eject them, right? People will take offense to it and do something about it. That was less in the past. Uh, but these are rare incidences, right? These are things that stand out in my memory and I've been here for many years, so it's not a big deal. Here in Leon, you tend to not have that uh, being at a distant thing. It's a nice combination. And there's lots of places in Nicaragua like this. Leon is just where I live, so it's the example case. And it's one of the reasons I live here. You're, If you're here, you're not the only expat if you're living here, right? We have a fair-sized expat community, so in no way are we abnormal. Now, if I walk through an extreme remote barrio, people are a little bit confused as to why I'm there. Unless they recognize me, then they know that I'm filming barrios and it's not a big deal. But even some of the more remote barrios, Sutiava, Guadalupe, uh, Heroes and Martyrs, like they actually do have one or two expats who live in them. In almost all cases, we've got expats who spread out and sprinkle themselves here and there. And because of that, there's actually very little of this surprise that there's an expat there. They may be surprised at the number of them suddenly. Wait, there's three? I thought there were two. Wow, what's going on? Right, they're taking over. 50% increase. Watch out! Right? Maybe. But in general, they're kind of like, ah, it's probably a visitor. And you're not, you're not a sight, right? You're not of interest to anyone particularly. If you go out to restaurants downtown, there's mostly Nicaraguans. But certain restaurants have a representation of, of expats from time to time. And so you don't stand out, but you're not in a tourist culture. So you don't have those beggars who are trying to get their money from expats because there aren't enough of us to make that work. And when you do see expats, there's a really good likelihood, like 50%, that they live here, they're not visitors. And that's a key because when you're actually living here and part of the community, then people start to see you as friends and family or potential friends and potential family. And you're just part of the fabric of life and they know that you'll likely see them again and just the reaction is totally different. So that was one of the reasons that we moved out of Granada because I first lived there nine years ago and our feeling was we did stand out and everyone saw us as a tourist to be taken advantage of. And that's always going to be true in a tourist location. It has nothing to do with Nicaragua specifically. It's just normal. And so living in Granada was a mistake by, uh, but it was a great experience for us. We learned a lot about Nicaragua and it caused us to come back and move here permanently. But when we came back, one of our rules was there's absolutely no way we were going to consider Granada again. We ended up in Leon and it has been an amazing blessing. What a great city has been for us. But there's lots of cities like this. But So Esteli would be similar. Matagalpa would be similar. Hinotega, maybe. You might start to be a little bit uh, of, a, of a novelty in Hinotega, but only the smallest amount. And I have been there and didn't get that feeling. I just feel that like it's, it's within the realm of possibility. Hinatepe, you won't get that. Didiamba, you won't get that. Rivas, you will definitely not get that. Um, Messiah, you will definitely not get that. All, Managua, all those places have enough uh, foreigners that you will just blend in and people don't care. The places where you might start crossing over the line and be too rare is Huicalpa, Boaco, and uh, uh, Chinandega. I have been like gone north of Chinandega to like El Viejo. I spent a lot of time there. And when I'm in El Viejo, people do start to take notice. Like, whoa, are you lost? Why are you here? Now, there are still tourist beaches up that way and you pass through those cities. So as long as you're within that zone, they might be a little bit surprised, but they're not actually like I've never seen a foreigner here before. It's somewhere in between. So really the bottom line is if you're going to be going to a place where you have tons of tourists, 
it's gonna be a little bit of a problem. And if you're going to go to a place where you're a total novelty and there are no other expats, that's gonna be a little bit of a problem. But if you're going to pretty much anywhere else, the majority of Nicaragua is going to be very comfortable. You're gonna find that there are other expats. No one's gonna find it abnormal that you're here. People are not gonna see you as a walking ATM. You're gonna be treated as a normal part of society and things are gonna work out really well. I don't think that's too big of a concern. I've lived here for a long time and I certainly do not get that feeling at all. There's always a certain amount of obviously you are more likely to have quite a bit more money than the average Nicaraguan. And so a lot of times you're going to end up helping people out with things and that's just normal and to be expected. So not a surprise there. And you should expect a certain amount of that. Like that, that you should just be cool with that, right? you're really here and able to help. And so in many cases you want to, but it's not like people are looking at you as an opportunity for money. Obviously being an expat in some cases makes you a little bit more interesting for some people just because you're interesting, you're different than their everyday. And for other people, you might seem a little bit uh, scary or off-putting, or they may be worried that you're a little bit transient. And I noticed that even with some of my really good friends here, they're still like, well, you're not staying here forever, are you? Like they're just so sure that we're passing through, but that is not our plan. We plan on staying here. So you'll have a little bit of, people are just surprised by that and there are so many transient expats that it sometimes makes it hard to believe that you are not if you're really not. And of course, if you are, then it's not surprising at all. So I hope that answers your question, Scott. I hope you take a really good look at Nicaragua and give it a consideration. I think the things you're, you're looking at um, are good concerns, but not ones that would really be a problem here in Nicaragua. If anything, especially with the natural disasters, I think this is actually a really good choice. You just have to kind of get past the, the is this a list of things that does happen here and move into that world of, oh, these are not things that I will need to worry about. I have generally very safe conditions from weather, very safe conditions from natural disaster, and I don't have to worry about those kinds of things happening to me, even though they may happen. I will just get to talk about it online and it'll be a point of interest rather than being a problem. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. For all of you who have your own questions, get down there in the comments, ask them away. Feel free to send in a video response or a video question. I'd love to respond to those. All the information for that is down there as well. As always, if you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. And I will see all of you tomorrow. And you can support the channel as well by clicking on one of the videos that pops up here or scrolling down and clicking on one of the ones that YouTube recommends.